My paint box is designed around a 12 inch by 16 inch canvas panel. Here you can see one panel being slid into the top lid storage slots. The top lid has two slots that will hold two panels. Or if you're using smaller panels, you can still use the slots and hold the smaller panels in place with push pins. The paint box is designed to mount to a standard camera tripod, which has a detachable mounting base. The base is then screwed into a quarter inch by 20 T-nut, which is attached to the bottom of the paint box. All camera tripods use a standard quarter inch bolt to attach to cameras, or in this case, the paint box. Then the paint box can be easily attached to the tripod. When you open the lid, you secure it in place with these modified friction lid support arms. The entire paint box can be easily raised or lowered or tilted. And a canvas panel is held in place with the simple spring clamp. Or if you're using a smaller panel, that can also be held in place with a spring clamp. When you're done painting, you simply slip the painting into one of the two storage slots in the lid. Close it up, and you're on your way to your next painting spot. The first step was to make the bottom of the paint box. Here I'm pre-drilling and using drywall screws. One screw for each joint. If you want your box to be square, you have to make sure that your plywood bottom is nice and square. And then with a thin bead of glue around the edge of the bottom, you can attach the bottom with three-quarter inch brads. Give everything kind of a quick sand. Here I'm cutting the top grooves in for the lid. There'll be three grooves. One groove is for the, the lid itself, and then there's two grooves that will store the canvas panels. And I'm pre-drilling the top three sections. And then I apply a bead of glue where the top lid will go into its slot. And also a bead of glue on the two ends. The three pieces get put together. Each joint gets one drywall screw. And then it's important to line up the top with the bottom to make it square while the glue dries. And I kind of like to clamp it in position. The clamp is just basically here to, uh, to hold the top in line with the bottom. And I let that dry for a couple hours. Here we are looking at the top of the box and you can see a small gap that we need to fill in with a strip of wood. Measure the distance between the two side pieces and then the thickness of the strip. And then apply a proper amount of glue and clamp the piece into place. I was designing the boxes I went along 
and you can see that the lid itself was left extra long here. I would say trim the top of the box to the right size before gluing the strip in. Now I'm marking where the hinges will go. I trace my pencil line with a razor knife and then I cut out the waste with a chisel. You can just flush mount the hinges if you want to and the paint box will work just fine. It, it just looks a little better if you mortise in the hinges. Here I'm marking the lid position of the hinges and then I'm going to go ahead and transfer those marks with a square and I'll cut the hinge mortises in the same way as I did on the bottom. Then I've opened up the box and I line everything up and I mark where the hinge screws will go and then when I know I have everything where I want it in the right place I go ahead and I attach the hinges with the small screws and I check to see if it fits right. Now I'm going to make two lid support arms using these off-the-shelf friction lid support arms that I need to modify a bit. I don't need this angle part of the support so by drilling out the rivet that holds it in place I can remove it and discard it. I also don't need that metal cover of the friction arm. This has a little lip that will get in the way so I can replace that with just a regular small washer. After testing the arm, I now realize that if you use a small rubber washer instead of a metal one, it works better. And here I'm reattaching the friction part of the arm. I carefully hammer a small round-headed nail that fits snugly into the hole in the support arm. You want a round-headed nail so it will catch the arm and not slide off too easily. And then the friction part mounts to the bottom with two screws. If you don't want to bother with the metal support, you can make one out of wood. Just put a screw on the bottom and a screw on the top, and then take a slat of wood with two grooves in it that the slat kind of just latches into place. If you make the slat the right thickness, it can even be stored in the lid. This piece of wood will attach the box to the tripod. You'll need a quarter inch by 20 by 5 sixteenths T-nut. 5 sixteenths refers to the length of the little shaft of the T-nut. I used a two and a half inch piece of wood, the length of the box, and then I plane down this piece of wood to about a half an inch just to make it a little bit lighter and it attaches with drywall screws to the bottom of the box. You have to drill a 5 16th hole for the shaft of the T-nut and then also you have to recess it a little bit um, just to compensate for the thickness of that T-nut because once you hammer the T-nut down into place you want that T-nut to be perfectly flush with the wood. That way the mounting base of your tripod will also be flush with the wood and it won't rock back and forth. If you don't have the tools to recess that nut, use a piece of self-adhering felt to compensate for that thickness.